so hi everybody so welcome back to introduction to web development with python and javascript so um so let's first start by uh talking about the homework for the last week which is to use some uh, api and to create some basic website don't worry if you don't do it but if you do if you did do it uh and you want to share uh, feel free to raise your hand or just unmute your mic to share your website and it's kind of like a show and tell thing. Okay, something wrong with my visual ah, the freaking background. Let me double check on that. Um, but um, let's see, yeah, this looks really weird. Um, so uh, does anybody uh, do their homework for last, uh, for, you, uh, for last week, which is like basically uh, using some uh, APIs to create some website? I partly did it, but then I got a little confused, so I stopped at a point. Okay, so do you want to share your project, Vera? Okay, sure. Let me share it real quick. All right. Uh, I think you disabled participant screen sharing. Let me go ahead and do this. All right, could you share now? Yeah, okay, thanks. Wait, I have a question for the title, for the title of the um, website. How do you change the size? How do you change the size? Um, I would talk about that. Uh, basically, just use H1 tag, essentially. Basically, that's what you do. H1 tag, that's HTML to make it bigger or smaller, basically. Okay, so I'm screen sharing right now my REPL. Okay. And for some reason, this part right here, can you see my cursor? Yeah. This part, this part right here is not showing the picture. Uh, it's not showing the picture? No. It's supposed to be, but I don't know why. Uh, could you click the link? And probably can take a look. Is there an image there? Yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, could you click on the link itself? Right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the image that you attach, it, you didn't actually download the image and upload to Replit. You didn't do that. You need to download the image as well. So you can see oh, okay. it's not found, basically, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that solves my problem. So I'll just try that out. I'm gonna stop sharing now. All right, okay, nice. Um, so does anyone else wanna share your guys, uh, share your own project? Um, I'll do it. All right. Wait, um, I have a question. Is it okay if I can use Adam for this? Uh, you mean, uh, is Adam, you're referring to the code editor? Yes, the code editor. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, where is it? Oh, yay. For some reason. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Okay. Okay, the lies of life. Where did you find all these images? Down, I downloaded them. Okay. Okay. I downloaded them. All right. Okay. Yeah, stop sharing. Okay. Have you learned HTML before? Um. Can you have you learned that? Okay. Uh, have you learned HTML before? Mm, no. No. Okay. <laughs> It's pretty nice to see you like just attend like a last few class then didn't have time to talk about like HMO but you can pick up your own. That's pretty good. Nice job. Um, uh, how about anybody else? Do they want to share your guys their own project? Uh, I have a website. Yeah, sure. Henry, go for it. I mean, it's not that big, but it's fine. It's fine. Just share it. We uh, want to take excuse it. me. Ooh, nice. Nice. I love your your moon picture. Okay. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. I love your moon picture and your tomato tag. That's pretty cool. Um, anybody else? Yes, I can't. I can't find uh the the thing though. Uh, okay. So did you store it uh, on it on Replit? Yeah, it's it's on a Replit, but I have like a bunch of random Replit. <laughs> okay, so um, probably can find it if you if you possible. And then, um, if you can, don't worry if you can't. Uh, I'm actually going to share one as well after I get this set up. Uh, let's see. So it's uh, so. Let's see this. C slash create room. Okay. So let me go share my screen as well. Uh, okay, how about this? Jeffrey, could you share your first? I think you sent your link there. Do you mind you, you just share screen this? I see you sent your send a link. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, you guys can do a screen share if you want to, or I can just open a link for you guys. Do I have the screen share? Do I have to screen share? Well, because if you don't screen share that, I will screen share it. Yeah, can you screen share it? What? Okay. Okay, so here is, uh, here is, I think this is um, the, uh, the uh, what's your name again? Oh, I forgot. Uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey's project. Cat. Uh, whoa. Let's see another cat picture. Let's see. This is probably, this is nicely done. Let's see. Uh, nice. Where did you get the cat picture? It's like a cat API thing. Okay, nice. So this is just a PDF of cat pictures. Yeah, it's a color show of chat uh, chat picture. I love how your button is style style uh, were pretty nice. Probably can add a line break between the button and the image. That's probably going to look a little bit nicer. And then if you want to, you can also add some background color as well. Um, and by the way, probably really just going to like remain my camera close for this entire session because like sometimes my virtual background is not working. I don't I don't know how to cancel that. So I'm try, I'm going to try to figure out during the break. I found the thing. All right. Uh, do you want to screen share it, Kyle? Are you Kyle? Yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to um, screen share this? It's just like it prints the links for pictures and stuff. On the okay, so do you want to uh, try it out? Uh, do you want to see it? Uh, can I totally see it? Do, do you want to screen share it? I'm going to share the screen. Uh, it's, it's this. Okay. I see the fetch right there. Let's see. Okay. It, it prints three. Uh, you can choose how many... Uh, you can choose how many photos it prints and how many how many links it prints. Okay, so is the image actually associated with the image at the top? Yeah, I think it is, right? Yeah, th this is this. I'm pretty sure these are these. Okay, okay, nice. Could you choose like a different date or something? Uh, you can choose how many, you can choose like how many, uh, how, how long it goes to. Like if I change this one to like, like, like a big number, like four, th th there'll, there'll be more stuff. Now there's like four images. Oh, nice. This is nicely done. So you probably use some loop or something. All right. That looks really good. Nice job. All right. Good job, everybody. So does anyone else want to share? Does anyone else want to share? Anything I probably have. Okay, uh, then I'm going to share mine. And then uh, this is one of the projects still working on. So I'm not gonna promise it actually 100% works. I hope it works. So uh, let me go ahead and screenshot that as well. So it's this. So essentially what this is, is this is a live chatting web app. It's similar to Discord. And then this is um, basically, it means that you can set message without refreshing. Since there's only one person in the room, I can just say hello. 
and then you can see I see the message instantly without refreshing. And then, um, so if you guys want to join this room as well, first, what you can do is uh, visit this URL here. And it's a little bit complicated since my UI UX design is not that good. And then you guys will actually learn how to implement that as well. So um, this is, uh, let me share the link as well. So, whoops. So this is the URL that you should see. And then um, you could like log in, you could register for an account. You can use fake email address if you want to. I'm not gonna spam you. And then you can log in later. And then here, uh, ignore this, you can just go here. And then, then you can click on this demo. Basically, you can search for a public room if you want to. The public room is called demo. And then you can join this room and then you can chat if you want to. And then um, we'll talk about, so we'll actually go ahead and implement this for the future projects. This is one of the most interesting projects that you actually going to implement uh, on this class. Um, it's called, it, we're going to use something called Socket, WebSocket to make, uh, to make it look nice. And then look, we got a user here. You can see it live update. It's a welcome, somebody's here. And you can see there's a new person here. And then I don't know who this person is. Hi. As you can see, if you're drawing, you can see we're actually seeing your comments at live. Hi, Jeffrey. You can see we can actually see it. Uh, you cannot access it. I don't know. Probably you need the account because Jeffrey can access it. But we'll talk more about these when we actually implement the project itself. So we'll talk about um, at, uh, socket when we get to there, which is pretty close. It's like, we're gonna implement this probably somewhere next week or something. All right, so this is my project. And then it's really good to see all of you guys uh, creative project and interesting project. Uh, but now what we will go ahead and start is let's go ahead and talk about Python. And again, I'm sorry that I cannot turn the my uh, webcam on because virtual background is not working. My eye is like a image within it. It looks really creepy, so I'm not just not going to share it. And um, again, so th from today, I'm going to change a little bit. So instead of using, you guys can still using Replit if you uh, if you want to. You can't access it. Mm, that's weird. We have to sign up. If, even if we do sign up, it just kicks us out. That's probably a bug I didn't need to fix eventually. But if you want to, you probably you go to the like homepage again. And then you press login and you log Yeah, in. yeah. It really doesn't make sense. But it's at the top if you guys want to try it out. But um, basically, this is like... Uh, a, a web app that we're actually going to implement. If you guys want to chat there, you can. can uh, the you desi the why design. Can't you, why can't you use Replit? The reason I didn't use Replit because the Replit going to the URL, the link, the so, so the web page we're doing right now is static web page. So basically, I mean, it didn't have the back end, but for the app that do have the back end, once you close the Replit tab on your browser, it will close the connection as well. That means you cannot access it. And then this app is host on Heroku. It's basically mean like once there's connection, it's going to constantly serve it. And then we see Nerdy Barrel there. Nerdy Barrel, probably that's someone there. Or not. Uh, Excuse me? Yes. What is the public room name? Demo. Demo? Yeah. Okay. So All low caps? Uh, no, just lowercase. Okay. Yeah, I see more people here. We can see Skadoodle, Nerdy Barrel there, um, stuff like that. So this is something we'll go ahead and have a chance to implement. Um, but now what we'll talk about is, so for the future class, what we'll talk about is actually focus on more Python before we reach here. So we'll actually create like three projects. We'll create a URL shortener, so shorten URL. We'll also create uh, this Discord clone. We'll as well as create an Algo expert clone, which is, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to there. So then you will, so 
uh, in the future, you will have an uh, opportunity to use two different frameworks, Flask and Django, and then you will have opportunity to learn cloud technology such as uh, GitHub and Heroku as well. But now let's go ahead and focus on what we're going to do today, and let's talk about Python. All right, so Python, uh, have, uh, how about this? I'm just going to do a quick survey. How many people know Python before? Raise your hand if you uh, know Python. So I just want to get a brief know how many people know Python. What what app are you using? What app? So uh, the software that's my, so you can still using Replit. You can just create a Python rep, Replit. You don't have to download anything. The reason I'm using this is sometimes when I use Zoom, it's not my is really laggy. Um, so, so I would like prefer a external software instead. But you guys can tab uh, tab Replit. Uh, you can can use Rep Replit inst uh, Replit as well. It's not going to change anything for now. All right. So I see Vera, Kyle, and Samuel know Python before. Uh, anybody else know Python? Anybody else? Uh, okay, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but okay. Another person on Python. Okay, nice. So um, how many people, so Python is another programming language. So you guys can lower your hands now if you want to. So Python, so it seems like not everybody heard of Py uh, know Python before, but Python is not a snake in this case, um, Python, is another programming language. And as uh, just like JavaScript, the programming language is dynamically typed, which means it didn't have type. So does anyone come from like a type language such as like a C++ or Java before? Uh, if you guys come from that before, then you guys are probably going to, uh, then you guys probably going to know that uh, we didn't declare type when we declare variable. So like we can switch variables so in Java, you cannot do something like this. So if it's a string, it has to keep as a string. And then you cannot change the string later to a number or something. But in Python and JavaScript, we can do that. So uh, that's the magic of dynamic type language. It's probably going to be good and bad in most circumstances, but um, it's really good for beginners to get started with. What's the app you're using? Like the thing you're using right now. Uh, I keep forgetting when I'm, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's called Visual Studio Code. Why, if I keep starting, I want keep, to keep forgetting to actually see the software name. It's called Visual Studio Code, yes. Sorry about that. It's called Visual Studio Code. Um, you can find it. I'm going to send the website there if you want to download it. I think this should be the website, code.visualstudio.com. You can take a look. And then as Kessler mentioned before, he has Atom installed. You can use Atom as well, where you can use other code editor, such as Sublime Text. Um, but- What about PyCharm? PyCharm, yeah. PyCharm is another good Python IDE, to be more specific. Um, it's a good Python uh, IDE, but um, this, these are more like a general purpose, not focused on Python but um, uh, it's a language as well. All right, so first of all, we'll start is, uh, well, let me go and create a terminal here. So for the people who are still using Replit, it's, uh, you can ignore this part, but for people who are actually using a uh, external code editor, you should be able to create a terminal. If you're in the Visual Studio Code, you could uh, go, uh, create a terminal um, by just like, I think it, you should have a terminal tab at the top that you can create. And then what is a terminal? It's basically like a JavaScript console where you can actually execute and run Python code basically. And then, um, and then let's start by writing our first line of Python code. And then as always, we'll go ahead and start with hello world. All right, so hello world. And then, so I don't recommend you to actually like download all the software because you actually need to download Python itself as well. 
Um, but if you're in MacBook, it should like Python two should automatically comes. But I'm also going to use some Python three syntax. So still, I recommend you to using Replit instead of this external coding editor. The reason I'm using it again is because it's load faster. And then, it, so yeah, that's the only purpose I want uh, when I'm using it um, instead of Replit. Hello. Uh, uh, but assume you have Python installed, you can usually type uh, Python 3 or just Python, then your file name. And then you can see, you should see output here says, hello world. Okay. So that's like the most uh, basic syntax of uh, Python. This is the first line of Python. Basic. Um, yes, uh, Kasima? Can I add something? Yeah, you yeah. could also use terminal. Could you use terminal? Yeah, this is called terminal actually. Uh, does Python 3.7 work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything above, try to install every, anything above 3.6. There's a specific feature I want to use in, that's only introducing 3.6. Is 3.7 the newest? Uh, I think 3.8 is probably probably the newest. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you guys, if you guys want to set up as well, you can go to like Python.org. Whoops. Python.org to install Python. If you want to take a look at that, but it's a little bit complicated. Uh, and then you must add to shell. So still I recommend you use the replit, but I'm using this because it's load pretty fast. All right, so this is the first line of Python. Does anyone have any questions? What's that? Okay, so oh, let's do a comparison. And then by the way, to comment in Python, you're gonna use the hashtag. So hashtag is located at uh, above key three, so you can type uh, shift three to get the hashtag and then you can write comment there. And in here, I just want to go ahead and compare what we typed. So this is Python and this is JavaScript. So you can see these two are kind of similar, kind of different. You can see they all have a parenthesis and the parenthesis they have like a string inside of it. But you can see a different is actually the function name. So we have a console here. I have a console here, but got a print statement here. We've got a print instead of a console.log. The rest of the stuff is uh, same, basically. And that's how you can like create an output, create an output in uh, Python. It can use print. It doesn't work for me. So Kate, what doesn't, what, what didn't work for you? Sorry for not chatting chat really often enough. Do you have any issue, Kate? If I had any issue, just use the REPL instead. It's pretty hard to get started. Um, if you guys had any question, feel free to just interrupt me and then I can. Okay, no problem. All right, so now you can see we got this um, hello world and then you can see statement on the left is a Python, statement on the right is JavaScript. Now uh, let's go ahead and talk about some other basic stuff that we can do in Python. So uh, can uh, so to define a variable, let's get started with defining a variable. To define a variable is even easier in Python. You literally just need to type the variable name, equal sign, and the value you want to assign to this variable too. You don't even need a keyword like a var, like const, you don't even need them. You just need a variable name. So for example, I can have a name here and Name is just going to be Jeffrey. I just come, uh, basically, let's just choose that name. And then you can see this is, so now what we did is we create a variable called name and then we assign it to Jeffrey. Okay, we assign it to Jeffrey. And then now if I try to print out the name instead, So now if I try to print out the name, what you can see is you can see Jeffrey can print out. And then that's how we can deal with variables in Python. 
It's even easier than uh, JavaScript. Okay. It's even easier than JavaScript. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So this is variable. And then let's talk about different type as well. So some variable types, uh, some types in Python, despite just said it didn't have a type. Well, each variable kind of do have a type. So this is called a string. This is a number. Or more specifically, it's an integer, or int for short. And this is a float floating point number or decimal number. And then let's see what else do we have. We have uh, this. So does anyone remember what is this in JavaScript? Does anyone remember this? Uh, remember this a collection of values? So A, B, C. Does anyone remember this? What is this called in JavaScript? Or does anyone know what is this called in Python? Is it like dictionary or something? It's, it's, it's not exactly a dictionary. As we would talk about dictionary, something uh, similar to dictionary, but not quite. Does anyone have other ideas what this is called in Python or uh, JavaScript, if you remember? A list? Yeah, it is called a list in Python. But uh, in programming world, it's more generally referred to array. All right, so it's a way to like store all kinds of value. Uh, Lucas, so ask, how do you get into it? What do you mean by how do I get into it? Get into what? Like the Python. Oh, how, how do I get interested in basically? What am I interested in? Uh, no, like, do you have to download it? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, you need to download it. And I said the link at the top, it's at python.org python.org and then you need to uh, are you using macbook or a pc lucas are you using a PC. macbook or a pc 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 yeah you need to download it i don't think python come with come with it but still i recommend you to just go replicate instead because it's much easier okay so uh in case you've never used replicate before here's a link replicate and it's much easier. Just you just need to create something, and then you don't need to download anything. It's just a website. But yeah, you can see that's how we can define a name. This so this is called list or array. And this. So does anyone know what this is called? This. What is this called? Does anyone know what, what is this called in Python? What is this like data structure called? It's called dictionary. This is a dictionary. And we'll talk about why that called a dictionary. So job Python's not really like a beginner friendly. You can see all this type, like they are really like easy to understand. And then like what they call, uh, it's really easy to understand. And then once you know, you will see, oh, the, that exactly what it is. Is instead of array or object, that sounds really weird. Uh, Python name it really beginner friendly. So Python is toward a beginner friendly language rather than like uh, Java or C++. Um, but yeah, so this is a dictionary where it's called object in JavaScript. And yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's, uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much about it with types in Python. So we have a int, float, string, list, dictionary. That's a pretty common one. And then we will see more once we get to there. And then, uh, so we talk about variable assignment. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about uh, conditional statements as well. So I'm going to go a little bit fast here, but I'm going to slow down when we talk about object-oriented programming because object-oriented programming is really like the most fundamental concept as well. So Python is another object-oriented programming language. Turns out just like JavaScript. So we'll talk about that as well. But for now, we'll go ahead and um, let's talk about conditional statements. So I will use the car example again. 
let me go ahead and create a thing called age, uh, create a variable, excuse me, uh, equals 15. And then in here, I want to go ahead and construct a conditional statement. So, so uh, to construct a condition, so does anyone remember what this conditional statement is? Um, like an if statement? Yeah, it is an if statement. So basically, co conditional statement means that uh, if a circumstances, or if a condition is matches, then or if a condition is true, do something. Uh, we're optionally can add an else, which means otherwise, if the condition above is not true, well, all the conditions above not true, just execute this. Or you can add else if as well. And then this basically is between if and else. And then it's if the first condition didn't get executed, then uh, go ahead and execute the condition below it, essentially. So this is H. And then here I can say something like this. If H is greater than 18, and then you can say print, you can drive a car without parental permission. Um, and then in here, if we go ahead and run Python intro.py again, Whoops, wait, oh shoot. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm worried about. Okay, it's actually using colon. Sorry about that. So it's colon, it's not curly braces. It's really hard like to teach Python and JavaScript, despite they are similar, but their like their syntax is different. But it's something like this. So you can say you don't even I don't think you even need parameters actually. So you can say something like this. If h is greater than 18, then you can add colon. And then you must indent this line. So I don't care how much you indent. I don't care if you press a tab key or press space bar. You need to indent. Because if you type something like this, it's going to give you an error. As you can see, this array squiggly line under print. You must indent this. And that way, the Python interpreter know that's OK. You want to execute with this line, essentially. And then you can say, uh, you can see print. You can drive a car without parental permission. We don't need summary colon there. All right, so if we go ahead and run this, uh, what we see is absolutely nothing. It's because 15 is not greater than 18. Thus, everything here won't get executed, won't get run. So we didn't, we don't see anything else get prints out. All right, so that's uh, Python. Uh, Conditional statement part one. Okay, so now let's talk about part two. What if you want to print out something if they like if they cannot drive a car without parental permission? Well, then you can use the else keyword, which means is all conditions above is not true, then go ahead and execute else. So here I can say print, uh, print, let's say. You can't you you can't drive a car. And then if you run this, you can see since age is less uh, is not greater than eighteen, it's uh didn't well, it won't execute this. And then there's no further if statement, so it's just going to execute this else statement. Okay. And then um, lastly, I'm going to go ahead. So, but what if you are between like 15.5 to 18? So under California law, I think as long as you are, uh, before, uh, as long as you are like greater, uh, older than 15.5 years old, you actually can get a lesson with, with certain permission. Uh, so in here, we're gonna go ahead and add elif. So spell E-L-I-F means elsef. It's a shorthand notation for elsef. And in here, we're going to say, else if, let's put a condition here. And I can say, if age is greater than or equal to 15.5, we're going to say greater than or equal to here. And then in here, I can say print, um, you can't, uh, you can drive a car with parental permission, and then you cannot drive a car. And then if you run this, now you can see you can't drive a car because 15, 
uh, is not greater than 18 nor greater than 15.5. But if I change it to 16, what we see instead is you can drive a car with parent permission. Or if I change it to 19, and you can see you can drive a car without parental permission. So that's the basic of conditional statements. So does anybody have any questions with that? No questions? All right. Let me double check the chat message. Okay, I guess I will answer a few questions there. So, because I forgot to answer. So, um, I didn't understand the ass assignment. So feel free to just email me and I will try to respond to everybody. And then, um, Python is the most difficult language. For my perspective, it's not. If you've heard of a uh, programming language called C, you can try that out. I promise you it's harder than Python. Um, yeah. And then mine doesn't work again. What doesn't work again? Okay. If you could elaborate on that. Okay. So, uh, so, Ages 19, so make sure you indent it correctly. Did you see any error, Kate? Yes, it's a syntax error that what I expected. Because notice that it's Python's not like behave nicely as JavaScript on like the style wise. So you must format exactly like this, including this tab. And then you make sure that if L if and else are on the same line, not the same line, but same alignment. And then this inside of the uh, if state. So, and then you need to make sure you indent for every statement that is inside of an if, if statement. Basically, make sure you have like correct indentation set up. Uh, and then you can see, I can see there, so something like this. And uh, you should backspace your else space there. So there's some space uh, before else, so try to remove that and that should work. All right, no problem. Okay, so this is the ideas of conditional statements. Uh, please tell me if I'm going a little bit too fast because I'm going to assume every, everybody learned JavaScript because I talk about JavaScript uh, and then these are just like how to transfer them into Python. Um, now let's use another example. Uh, let's go ahead and use this for loop. And then let's actually talk about while loop first. So now let's go ahead and introduce the idea of loop. Basically, it's executing a set of instruction or a set of code for a given amount of time. So for example, uh, let me go and create a while loop. So my goal here is just to print out a number from zero to four. So print out number from zero to four. So Zero, one, two, three, four, basically. So what I can do here is first I need to create a iterator. So the number itself, let me just name it to number. So it's probably going to be easier to understand. So num. Is there an easy way to make comments for every line? Uh, whoops. Uh, do you mean a keyboard shortcut, uh, Andrew? There is a keyboard shortcut. So you can just press some key. Um, and then you don't have to like type it redundantly. So are you using PC or MacBook? These are some common questions, so I'm gonna answer PC. I'm actually not sure how to do it on PC. You should go to like the website or just Google it, like Visual Studio Code, comment, shortcut, PC. But if you're using MacBook, uh, it's command, I forgot, I just literally forgot about it. I think it's command K, comment C for MacBook. And then I'm not sure about PC, sorry about that. You could take a look of Google for, um, and then they should give you some like response how to do it. All right, so uh, num is a current number. And then what I can do now is start a while loop. So I want to keep printing number from zero to four, right? So in here, what I can do now is something like this. So I can type while and then parenthesis. And instead of parenthesis, Actually, no, why do you type parenthesis? You don't need parenthesis. 
So while in here, what you can type is a condition, a condition that you want to be able to like, so like a condition. So similar to conditional statement, this is a condition that basically says if the condition is no longer true, then just break out of this loop and don't execute this loop again, basically. So in here, what we can say is while, and then I can say I less than five because I want to print out every number that is between zero and four, right? Zero and four, um, and uh, zero and four. And then what we can do, so uh, by the way, I'm writing pass. I'm writing a pass here. So what, what is a pass basically means literally, because like, if you see something like this, it's going to give a syntax error. If you want to make a statement that is empty, like an empty loop, you can type pass here. Literally means uh, this is just like a placeholder or something. Uh, basically. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So now let's go ahead and start to add some contents inside of this while loop. And then in here, I can say some, uh, something like print out num. Basically just print out the current number. And then what I want to do is actually go ahead and add number each time. So uh, after I print out a number, I want to add the number. So exactly, I'm going to add one. So I plus equals to one. And then you can see we got a number. And then you can see we now, uh, if I we say I plus equals to one, and then now you can see what that means is basically is change one by whatever value is instead of one plus one, one. So I, so it's basically is I equals to I plus one. So whatever value is I plus one, and then save it into I. Shorthand notation, I plus equals to one. There's no I plus plus in Python, unfortunately. And then if you take a look, It's not I, it's num. Sorry about that. While num. And then let's see. And then you can see zero, one, two, three, four, get print out. So does anyone has any question with while loop? Mine has like a bunch of zeros behind it. Oh, a bunch of zero behind it? Are you sure this is a number zero? It's not, not like a, not like this, but this. Is it like a, like a number zero, like an integer without quotation marks? Oh, oh it works now. I just All needed right. to like reload. It was like something from the past. All right, uh, Vera, do you have any questions? Yeah, can you post the code in chat? Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. Well, no problem. But yeah, so um, just in case you guys, uh, some of you guys are new, so if you need the code, feel free. To, I know you, it's even harder to get the code since I'm not using Repl anymore, but just remind me, I will post the code into a chat. Since I sometimes forgot about it. But this is the basic of what. Wow. So I just remember something that is pretty weird in Python. That is, that is a little bit weird. So before I talk about for loop, I want to go back to conditional statements just a bit. So suppose we have something like this. If, uh, so let's give a var, uh, let's give a, a variable. And then here name, let me just say, uh, let's see which name I'm gonna choose this time, Andrew. I'm just gonna type the name is Andrew. And in here, I want to say if name equals equals to Andrew and then print out Andrew. Right, so now I can see Andrew gets print out, right? Because the name is Andrew. But if I say name is, if I just give a number is zero, and then if I say number is equal to zero, whoops, so it comes out. Let's see. 
Okay, well, that's a little bit weird, I think. Because there, like, sometime when I'm using Python, well, that's weird. Um, okay, forget about that. But sometime when I'm using Python is when I try to compare to integer, it actually didn't give an equal. So, like, num equals equal to zero, it did, it, it's not equals. Probably I can do something like this num1 equals zero, num2 equals zero as well. And then if I want to compare num1, num2, and then I can say otherwise, and hi, and then, okay, that's, sometimes that's weird. I don't know how Python works out, but sometimes like when I try to compare two integer together, it didn't, it's not like print out like uh, actual, uh, uh, it didn't like pass the if statement. So it's like if zero equals equal to zero, do something else, do something. It did the else part. Sometimes that's work. Sometimes that's weird when I'm writing some Python program, but it looks like it behaves nicely right now. Um, what's a link? What do you mean by what's a link? I don't know how to get into Python. I don't have it. Uh, just use REPL instead. Just go to REPL.it. REPL.it. Basically, just go to there and uh, just create a new REPL instead, basically. All right, so that's the while loop part. And now I want to talk about different statements in here. So notice that we actually have a streaming part within this while loop. So first part is this. This is called initialization statement. We usually need to store a variable that's as an iterator or something. And it's basically tell us which number are we on. And then we have this num less than five thing which is the condition statement. And then basically this checks when the loop should end. And then finally, this is the incrementation statement or decrementation statement, depending on what you want to do. And this basically says, what do you want to do uh, after this loop get executed or something? Um, but well, after the loop get executed, uh, basically, so you can see I want to just basically add one to the end. If I'm missing any of these statements, this loop won't work, uh, or it's going to be a if in the loop. So if in the loop is a scary thing that we need to worry about. Now let's talk about for loop, which is a way to actually compact. So for loop is a little bit weird in, in, in Python. For loop is a little bit weird. Instead of write something like this, let i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus. We don't do that in Python. We don't do that. Instead, we did something like this for i in range of five. We do something like this. And then here, I can say something like print out i. And then if I type something like this, you can see it works. So we're gonna use for i in range of five. So we're using the range function here. Basically you can imagine like Python doesn't have like a way to actually, but we, we have something like this. So we, you can still find these three parts. These three parts are essential to creating a loop. So you can see i is initialization statement. It's basically a variable that's an iterator variable that we are keeping track of. And then you can see we're using the in keyword. And then this together is basically a, you, it's both like condition and incrementation. So a handled condition and incrementation using this range function. And then you can see range function actually give us a list. And then we're gonna take a look at that in just a little bit when we talk about list. And then you can see it basically says, loops through from zero to four and then do something with it. What do you want to do? Well, I want to print out zero to four each number. So I can say I, just like print out i, so it's going to say print out zero, one, two, three, and four. All right. Does anyone have any question with for loop? With for loop, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So if nobody have any question for now. So we will take a break really quick. So it's a ten minutes break. We'll go ahead and resume the class back in four thirty. We'll keep talking about Python. So um, that's the first part of uh, this class. And yeah, so it's now it's 10 minutes break basically.
my code keeps on infinitely printing one zero one two three four. Infinitely printing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I share a screen? Just interrupt me. Uh, you have to stop sharing for me to share. Oh, have to? Okay. So you can't like interrupt me to share. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Let's see. Like, it's infinitely sharing. Like infinitely. Okay. So do you mind if you press a stop button right now? Stop. Yeah, because I'm afraid it's probably gonna burn a computer. It's kind of probably gonna break a computer or something. But uh, let's see. Uh, no. You can see the indentation matters. So what's happening here is you are wrapping the for loop within the while loop within the if statement. So indentation matters. And then you need to make sure that you are unindent. Yeah. And then now if you try again to print that out. Yeah, so uh, how about this? Uh, try to. Yes. Now, yeah, so. Um, that's just something you need to remember with Python. Uh, indentation doesn't matter. Python. Also, else if doesn't work for me, it says I can't use else if. L, yeah. Okay, you need to put L if before else, basically. That's what it's trying to tell you. You cannot put L under else. Because under it's going to assume everything is finished after else because like else it should be the final statement, optionally the final statements for your if condition. Okay. It's, it's, what? Can I post a code? Um, yeah. Indentation error. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I'll post the code real quick. So we post it correctly. Uh, post all the code. All right. Uh, just a sec. Some of the codes commented else you need to uncomment it, basically remove the hash mark. Um, yeah.
Is the break over? In 30 seconds. That's what I'm, that's what my clock told me. It's like 36 seconds right now. Yeah, I know. All right. All right, so welcome back. All right, so can you guys hear me? I hope you guys can, yep. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna pick up where we left off. So we talked about loops and we talked about uh, uh, conditional statements, variable uh, types, and print statements. How could you print that stuff onto the console using print? And then uh, pick up where we left off with, uh, actually I want to briefly talk about conditional statements again after I did a little bit of research. So there's actually even a simpler way to a comparison in Python. We can actually literally say if, uh, let's just say if h equals 18. And then here we can say if, H is 18. Then here we can say print out 18. And then you can see now the 18 get printed out, basically. Um, essentially what it is, but we're using H something like, so that if we are using is, then that sub error may be occur. Okay, I think it's Python 3. Then some error might occur because I would handle it, but try to use this uh, equal instead because equal will be guaranteed that it will work all the time. But if it's another keyword that you can use for comparison, it literally check if an element is another element or not. All right. So um, this is conditional statements. And now let's talk about different data structures. So we're like different, other different types of variables. So first let's go and talk about list. So what is a list? Well, list is a collection of values. So you can put whatever you want into a list. So for example, I can create a list with my books. In, in here, I'm gonna say books. And then here I can say Harry Potter. Um, I say I don't read book a lot. Uh, Harry Potter. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, the Hunger Games. And in here, we can also add, let's say, the Lord of the Rings. All right. So these are the three, uh, three books that I have. Um, obviously, I have more books than that, but I just list three books here. So let's go ahead and talk about how could you add a new book to this list. How about this? So I can add a new book by just typing books.push. Actually no, book.append. So append, and then you can see it said append object to the end of the list. Basically, if I just remove this, the Lord of the Rings, and then if I move it down here, you can see it's going to append this into the books list, essentially. And then, um, you can see there should be a new element there. And then this is about uh, like how could you, we add an element to a list. Although you can see the different value in a list is separate, excuse me, separate by comma, essentially separate by comma. And then if we print out books here, and then you can see we have Harry Potter, The Hunger Games, and The Lord of the Rings, okay? That's essentially what it is. So you can see you've got different list here. All right, so this is the idea of list. And then, uh, but how do we remove an element in the list? Uh, we can remove an element in the list pretty easily actually. So we can just type uh, books that remove and then we remove with the uh, value. And then you can see you should only remove the first value so if I want to say, okay, I don't want, I don't want to have Harry Potter anymore. And then if I say that, and then you can see we get the Hunger Games and the Lord of the Rings. These are the books 
as we currently have. Essentially, you can see that represents an array format. Again, to create an array, you're going to use square bracket. And then it says square bracket, you can put whatever you want, but separate by comma for different values. Okay. So uh, again, if you have any questions, please just uh, please just like uh, uh, yell at loud aloud. So because uh, I'm not not going to ch check chat really often enough, enough, unless Zoom reminded me. So if you have any problem, feel free to just interrupt me. It's fine. Can you paste the code? Yes, I can. I shout. Okay. 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 So, uh, so this is books, essentially. And now, um, um, so this is a list, right? This is a list. So now let's go ahead and um, do more stuff. Uh, and then now let's go ahead and talk about how can we get a specific, specific uh, elements from a list? So it turns out that a list is similar to array in JavaScript. It's grouped by the index number or position number. Oh, index number. So for example, Harry Potter is position number zero. The Hunger Games is position number one. And the Lord of the Ring is position number two. So if we have an array like this, so, one, two, three, the index number is actually zero, zero, one, two. The reason because is the index number is always, uh, it's the index number is starting with zero. So that's why computer counts from zero. So it's like zero, one, two, and then the value is one, two, three, zero, one, two, one, two, three, essentially. Okay, so that's the idea of um that so that's the ideas of um how can we access by index number so that is the index number itself but how can we actually access a value so you can access a value by just typing bracket so here you can see this array is stored or this list is stored in this variable you can have square bracket and instead of square bracket just just type an index number for example i want to know what is first by its index number, or the second by the position number. So now if we take a look, you can see we've got the Lord of the Ring, because the Lord of the Ring got appended to here, but the Harry Potter get removed. So the Lord of the Ring is indeed the uh, first index number or the second element. All right, so this is list. Anybody have any questions with that? No. No, okay. All right, so uh, now it turns out that we can actually loop through a list quite easily as well. So to loop through a list, what if we want to print out like everything in the list? Well, in here we can actually just say for book in books, essentially. So book is a variable that is, that is basically like whatever, uh, the current element is, and the box is this uh, gigant this list. And then I've got a box, I've got a list. And then basically now the book, every time at each iteration, it's going to be the new book here. So like Harry Potter, uh, the Hunger Game, and the Lord of the Rings. And then it's essentially the book each time going to be a different book, but it's essentially going to loop through all the books uh, the book was in this books list. And uh, to perform most simplest operation, I can just say print out book. And then if we take a look, I sound straight into the pie. You can see you got the Hunger Game and the Lord of the Rings print out. So this is how we can loop through a list in Python quite easily. Does anyone have any question regarding to that as well? No. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so now we talk about uh, how to loop through a list by its book, uh, how to loop through a list. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about another data structure. It's called a dictionary. It's called a dictionary. 
So does anyone have any guesses? So a dictionary is something like this, A, B. Whoops. So does anyone have any guesses why this thing is called dictionary? Why this is called dictionary? So this data time I'm showing right here is a dictionary. Does anyone have any guesses why it's called dictionary? Okay, so uh, it's fine. So how about this? Does anyone, could, could anyone tell me what are the two most important thing that a dictionary must exist in order to like a means dictionary? The two most important thing that a dictionary must have in order to make it actual dictionary. Okay, so it turns out that we need these two things to make a, a real dictionary. We need word and definition. This is, are the two most important thing to make a dictionary a dictionary, basically. Uh, to make a dictionary a dictionary. And then in this case, you can imagine it as, uh, again, it's separate back called a uh, comma separate comma for different uh, for different like key and value pairs so this is called a key and value pairs so uh separate key and value is a colon but on the left hand side of the colon is a key on the right hand side of the colon is a value or the definition so this is why it's called a dictionary so in this case a key means the word that referring to a definition with value. So uh, in this case, you want to do something like that. Uh, if I want to do something like this, you can just call this a uh, dictionary. Call this a dictionary. And then in here, uh, I, could, I could just say uh, something like this. So I can say dictionary, print out dictionary, bracket a so that means what what's it going to do is it's going to try to find a key which is a and then because we use the bracket notation and inside of bracket notation we we uh, provide the key back a key and then let me comment this out and you can see we see b here so b is basically it's trying to find what uh, value is referring oh so it's trying to find what value is associated with uh, the word a and then you can see it's fine it is b all right so does anyone have any questions so far no questions all right so uh it turns out that you can add oh uh, yes uh code you mean put code in the chat yes all right so these are the code <coughs> excuse me <sighs> okay so um yeah uh i just put the code can take a look if you want to all right, so it turns out it's pretty easy that we can also like uh, create a new key and value pair as well. So basically what you need to do is basically like put a dictionary here and then bracket notation. And here you can provide whatever the val key is. And then if it's the existing key, I believe it's going to overwrite the existing value. But if it's a new key, it's going to add this to this, uh, uh, to this uh, dictionary. And here I can just say E and then it's going to equals to F. And then if you try to print out dictionary again, you can see A is associated with B, C is associated with, uh, B is associated with A, D is associated with C, and then F is indeed associated with E. All right. Okay, so uh, this is essentially a dictionary. 
and then how we can add a new value to a dictionary. Key and value pair. All right, so does anyone have any question on that as well? Okay, so that's the fundamental ideas of, uh, of uh, key and value pairs. And then a dictionary is used for, we want to store like a, a pair when we're referring to each other. And then uh, basically, and the list is basically storing the value that is, um, a list is basically storing value uh, that is like didn't associate with each other, but and didn't have any category like categorized stuff like that. So that's the difference between list and uh, list and dictionary. Okay. So there also we actually have other two most com uh, commonly used as well. I'm actually going to uh, talk about them as well. So. Uh, let's see. So one is called this. So here we can say something like this. We can create a set. Does anyone know what is set for? What is a set for? Or even though Python and heard of set before, what's the difference between set and list? Does anyone know the difference between set, excuse me, and list in Python? Okay, so uh, so essentially, what is the set? Well, um, let me actually show you here instead. Let's see, they're just like minor stuff. Okay, so in here, let's go start an IPython terminal here. Okay, so in here, what I want to do is something like this. So let me go ahead and create a new array or a new, uh, new uh, list. And then with only these three values, one, two, three, uh, right? It turns out that I can actually add a, a redundant value to it. So I can say array dot append one. And then if I say print out er, because you've got one, two, three, one. But what if you only want the unique value? You want to get rid of it. You want to get rid of like the redundancy or the duplicates. Well, that's where the set come into place. So you can write a set like this. So uh, s equals to set with a parenthesis. And then in here, what we can say is if we say set, I think we use the as. Yeah. So s dot add, we can add one. And then if we print out s, you can see you got one there, got one there. But if I say s dot add, one as well, and then print out S. You can see we still only see one one instead of two because set only stores unique value instead of like list storing all kinds of like uh, duplicates. All right. So that's the difference between sets and list. Basically, list can store the value that is redundant, but uh, set can only store the value that is. Uh, uh, not duplicate store. So it's used for storing some like unique value essentially. So what if you want to turn the, turn the array that we just created, the R array or list to uh, what uh, R, let's see, uh, R to uh, the list to a set. So in the case that I still want to remain it to a list, but I want to get rid of the duplicates of values. How can I do that? Well, it turns out that we can do that pretty easily as well. So first we need to do is actually change uh, this R list to a set, right? So we can change a list to a set by using set. And instead of set, we can put the list name with an iterable type name there. And then if we, do this, you can see now I have this weird dictionary looks like thing, but without a value, because it's a one, two, three here. But now I'm gonna change it back to list. So I can just say list of the set of R. And then you can see now we successfully get rid of the duplicate 
value one in this case. And then you can see when we see one, one here. But the type is still remain as a list. Uh, yeah, as a list. So does anyone have any questions between set, list, how to transfer uh, each to each other? Um, can you post this uh, code in the chat? Oh shoot, it's actually pretty hard for me to copy and paste the code in this case. Um, all right, sure. So I will try my best. Uh, let's see. It's, a little bit going to, it's going to be a little bit weird. You guys need to, let's see, where's my chat? Here it is. All right. Yeah, so, okay. It's a little bit complicated in a way. So just like remove all these like in three, in four, remove this, just get the actual code itself, basically. I don't know, some, sometimes it does that because I'm using uh, IPython. It's still like a real Python script. I'm probably gonna use a real Python script this time. All right, so this is about set. So does anyone know uh, the final, like kind of like a data structure for Python? So we talk about list uh, type, uh, list dictionary set. Does anyone, we actually have one more like a uh, data type like these. Does anyone know which one? Start with a T. Okay, so it's fine. Uh, this is like a weird one. It's not like that commonly used. It's called a tuple, or tuple. It's essentially like a, it's essentially more like a X, Y coordinate. So if you guys remember the X, Y coordinates, which I'm pretty sure you guys do. Um, so you can remember, imagine so we have something like this, right? And then let's just say we'll have some random dot here. And then this dot can represent, let's just say two, three and then uh and then you probably ask why we do math now but this is a example of a tuple so basically a tuple is grouped by parentheses and then they can have like whatever how many elements you want to you don't need to just have two or you can even have one or you can have two or more um one, one or more basically and then tuple is essentially a way that still you can access by index number, but it's like a way like to transfer another way to like ch exchange data, for example. I don't think there's anything special with tuple, but like you can, uh, it's commonly used with like this longitude and latitude system. That's a common example for a tuple. Uh, so this is a tuple you can imagine. And it, it's not really special, so I'm not gonna do anything about it actually. So, so that is about all the data, data types. And now let me go ahead and introduce you to the ideas of functions before we spend last 30 minutes on a class or the object-oriented programming uh, in Python. So let's go ahead and now talk about uh, functions. So, does anyone know how to create a function in Python? You use uh, define or def. Yes. yes, I use go I use tab def. And then here I can, you can see there's code snippet here already. And you can see uh, I have different class I can create, but uh, you can see I can create something like a function name basically. So I can just say, uh, let's just say, Hello, and then you can type with a parenthesis and then colon represent everything under it. And in here, what I want to do is I just want to print out hello world, basically. So I'm gonna say something like this, print hello world. And then if you run this, whoops. Oops, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, um, so in here, what we can say is something like this. So, uh, so if you run Python 3 intro.py, you can see nothing get prints out, despite I said print here. The reason the, the hello function doesn't work is because uh, 
It's because it turns out that we didn't, we cannot actually like cre create a, uh, we cannot, we didn't actually call the function. So after we define a function, we actually need to call a function. So a function just a, a way to store like a chunk of a code and then to use it later in different places. And then for example, I can say hello here. And then if I say python3 intro.py, and I can say hello world here. Because now I call the function. So does anyone have any questions so far with functions? Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the ideas of arguments. So for, for example, now what I want to do is not just print out hello and hello world anymore. I'll specifically print out like hello David, hello Jeffrey, hello Andrew, hello me or something, whatever the name is basically. So it turns out that it's pretty easy. And then we can use an argument or a parameter. And then in here, what we can say is we can take a parameter called name. Essentially, this just means we're going to create a variable. And this variable, what's this variable going to be equals to what the user actually going to provide this value inside of the parentheses as well. So the user need to provide something, basically. And then name, so what's name? Well, I can just say like my name. And then right here, I can just say print out. So here is a feature that I want to use. It's called F string. Basically what is an F string is you can actually embed job uh, Python variable within a string. Basically type F before the uh, either double quotation mark or single quotation mark. And then type curly braces where you want to embed Python. And then here, I can just type name here. And then now if I run again, you guys can see hello boy on here. If I start to uh, mess it around, so like Andrew, uh, and then Jeffrey. And then if I provide nothing, you can just see it said hello. But if I it provide nothing, and provide a uh, provide a string with em provide an empty string with provide nothing is absolutely different. So uh, if I just remove these two quotation marks, because they got an error, it's a type error. It says hello missing one required positional argument called name. So basically, what that means is it, you must provide this name argument, otherwise this function is going to have an issue with it. So how can I like, how can I make it an optional argument? Well, I can make it, so uh, thus, if the user didn't provide a name, I can just print out hello world instead. When here, I can just type name equals to none, none. And then in here, I can do something like this. So now this argument is, is optional, means you don't have to provide this, but if you do provide this, you will see this name here. So I can say if name, uh, it's not none, do this. Otherwise, because I print out hello world. And now name is an optional argument. And now you can see if I say something like this, and then you can see that hello world get run because I didn't provide an argument with it, but if I do, uh, let's run again. You can see now it's printed out the user's provided value instead. All right. So does anyone have any question with that, with all the function stuff? All right. So last thing I want to talk about with function is how to return a value. So what if I want to see what is actually like what if I want to do something like this? So I want to print out the output of this function. So it turns out that it's not. That means it didn't return anything. So you could make a return value here. And then in this case, I didn't find a need to return. So I can just return zero. Usually means it succeeded. Uh, so succeeded was execute the code. And now you can see if I print that out, the output for this function is equal to zero. So you can imagine that if you try something like this, like a, like a num equals to this, equals to this function, 
what the number going to equals to is the return value with the output for this function, or just zero in this case. That's the return statement. And I'm going to copy this into the chat, essentially. All right. Okay, so does anyone have any questions so far? No. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the final topic for today. And then this is going to be quite complicated. Complicated. And then this is called a class. Have anyone heard of class in Python before? Or used it before? Okay. So now we're going to talk about class, which uh, apparently nobody knows, which is pretty good because you guys can learn something new from it. And then here what I can type is something like this. So what is a class? Well, since Python is a object-oriented programming, everything in Python, just like in JavaScript, can be represented as an object or as a class. So as a specific type. So it turns out now we can create our own type as well. So let's take a look. Let's go first, let's go and type class. So that's how could you create a class in, on, in, in Python. And then in, in here, what I want to say is the class name. Um, class name, so what's your object name? So I'm just gonna call this fruit. Uh, let's uh, let's actually call this food actually to make it even more uh, general. Food. So we can just say class food pass. Okay. And then here is where we'll go out and put some properties and values to it. All right. So for example, I can just say something like this. Let's go ahead and start with try to hard code the value, and then can hard code value. Let's say something like this. The name of the food is going to be a pizza. It's going to be pizza. And then here, I can create. So now in here, let's go ahead and create a new class. Let's go ahead and truly create a new class. And then, uh, I, so I shall create a new instance of this class to be more specific. And then in here we can say, We can say uh, name uh, f equals to food. All right. And then here I can just say print f dot name. And then if I run this, you can see we print out the pizza. So it turns out that we can access the variable directly by just typing uh, the the uh the class uh the variable that we stored in and then um using dot notation to get the variable name that's what we're trying to get so that's create a class but to make it even more fun what we want to do now is not just hard code value is how can uh is actually like be able to like a user provide a value when they're creating new food let's say that and then so in here, I could say pizza. I could say pizza here. And then here, what I will do is actually I will write a def, and then I will start writing by a thunder method. So what is a thunder method? Well, it's usually written in some this way. So two underscore in it, two underscore. All right. And then here, we can write a parenthesis. And then usually always takes in cell. Uh, actually, yeah, always taking self, and then um, with some like argument, it's gonna we are going to accept. So we can say name, prize, uh, price, and then uh, yeah, something like that. But these are good for now. So you can see basically what happened is we have an init method. So init method is basically means initialization is this code going to execute the first whenever you initialize a new instance with it, whenever you create a new instance with this food class. And then you can provide some optional argument, some arguments in here. 
So you can see I require name and price here. So in here, I can just say pizza. And then 1.5. Uh, that's way too cheap. Let's just say slice of pizza. Um, and then in here, what I can do is actually I can use self. So notice that how I actually provide another variable called self. So if you remember from JavaScript, we use this actually with this. So, but this and self are referring to the same thing. It refer, so it referred to itself. So the new instance that you just created. So, uh, and the reason we're using self is you can imagine a self is the dictionary. And then once including self, you can access a variable anywhere within your program. Uh, because basically you cannot access name if you have different method essentially. But we say something like this, so we can say define in it self uh, name price, and then in here we could say uh, name equals to. Uh, we can say something like this: this self dot name equals to name, self dot price equals to price. Basically, you can imagine a self is a dictionary, and then we're assigning different values to a dictionary. So self dot name means we are assigning a create a new key called name and its correspond value should be whatever the user provided name is and the price price as well. All right, so that's the init method. And then now let's type pizza instead. You can see we still can get the name by using the down notation anyway. All right, so this is pretty fun. Again, we're using the dunder method or magic method. That this is a built-in method. Uh, you can type it by using two underscore at each side, and we see these two underscore is called init, I N I T, to initialize a new class, which is a corresponding argument. All right, and then what we can do is let's start to create some different method. So some different method I want to create is probably like uh, like how <clears throat> excuse me. So like how much would it cost to buy multiple serving of it? How much would it cost? So we can say something like this: cost. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so in here we de can define a property called cost. What we see in this was first we obviously need to take in self as a parameter. And then in here we can just type, we need the user to provide another value here. It's how many number of serving they want. And then it turns out that we can do it pretty easily. We can just return this dot price multiply by the number of serving they want to buy. That's essentially the cost of it. And then uh, let's go ahead and type pizza.cost. And then I need the num, so how many number do I want? Well, let's just say I want to buy two slices of pizza. And then uh, let's take a look. Oops, so there. Now you can see the price is 3.0 because two multiplied by 1.5 is indeed three. Okay, so does anyone have any questions so far? With class, I hope you guys can ask some questions. So I make sure you let that like you guys can actually understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but do you guys have any questions? No. No, okay. So I guess we'll move on to uh, uh, to like keep talking about like different topic within like class. So uh, now I guess we'll create our own method. So, but what I'm wondering the most is actually what is the pizza itself look like? So what does the pizza itself look like? So what does the pizza object look like? So we're gonna say print out pizza. And in here, if I type enter, I'm like, whoa, there's so many stuff happening here. 
and it's so ugly. So in case you're wondering what is this, if this is the module where it's defined in the main module, and then this is the object name, and then this is the. Does anyone know what is this chunk of number is? Well, does anyone have, want to guess what these uh, this number represents? Okay, so this is if you are uh, learning C or C plus plus or Java, this is means pointers. Have anyone heard of pointer before? So it's essentially a memory address, basically. It's one of the complicated topic that you are never going to use in Python. Like you're barely going to use it uh, for nor normal Python development, but you're gonna use it so much when you're doing about C, C++, maybe Java, etc. So how can I make it a little bit more beautiful? So it turns out that I can actually add a thunder method here, another magic method, and then that's called stir. Actually, uh, actually it's called wrapper. Wrapper. So what is a wrapper? Wrapper means represent. So what should happen when we represent this? Well, how do should we represent this? Well, in here, we can say something like this. Return, I'm gonna return an F string. So I'm gonna say something like food. Uh, and then here I want to say uh, something like pizza, let's uh, self.name and then self.pro. And then you can see now if you're trying to run that again, it's much more beautiful. You can see you have food and the pizza 1.5 here. So that's another donor method. Uh, so does anyone have any questions with that? No. No. All right. Okay. So, uh, so now I want to talk about the ideas of uh, the final ideas for today, actually. So the class is, oh, is ha we have 15 more minutes and I want to, uh, yeah. So, uh, so in here we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about is the ideas of the inheritance. So basically, you, so what if you have so much pizza? So, so now is, let's assume that I live in Italy, so that I have so much pizza shop. And then I have so many pizza, and then I don't think like most of the food is pizza. So I don't think it's valuable for me to keep using food anymore. I want to create something that is more specific to uh, pizza itself. So it turns out that what I can do now is like I can say class pizza. I can start to create a new class of pizza. But in the parenthesis, what I will do is I will actually inherit, inherit whatever is in here, basically, whatever is in the food. So we'll go ahead in the parenthesis, I will type food. And then again, I will type food. All right. So basically what that means is, okay, so what's happening is a Python going to understand, okay, so this person wants to create a new class called pizza that is based on this food. We're going to inherit everything from it. We're going to inherit everything from it, um, basically. But uh, we're going to inherit every, any, everything from it, but, uh, but probably he's going to do a little bit of customiza customization, essentially. And then, uh, just in case you're wondering, this is a single class uh, inheritance. All right, so uh, here what we can talk, so now what I can do is I actually need to go ahead and now using, recall that to do that, we actually need to like super, right? We need to actually like using some function like this to actually like init value with, with like this food class first. So in here, I can just say like food dot uh, init, I think, or something like this. And then here, what we can do is basically we're initialized with what with, with the food class, what the classes we are inheriting. And then here we can actually let's go ahead and create a init class first. So uh, user can provide their custom arguments. So self name 
price. And in this case, I'm gonna provide one more argument called toppings. And then food dot init. And then in here, what I'm gonna say is I can put the name and price here. So basically we want to first initialize with the food first, food class. Then we can go ahead and say self dot toppings equals toppings. So toppings, which in this case, I'm gonna assume it's an array or a list. And in here, I could just say P for pizza and then pizza here. So uh, we expected, uh, let's see. So we expect a name, a price, a, pro a topping as well. Let's just say a pineapple, sausage, and a lemon, a mushroom, let's say, just to make it a little bit more normal. And then uh, in here, if you print out P, oops, P for pizza. So, oops, uh, price. Okay, I need to actually provide a self here, I think. And then you can see, this is now the class called pizza. And then it does inherit everything from it. So uh, if we, whoops, if I say something like p.cost, and then I can put a number there. So I can say, what are the three slides of pizza cost? You can see it's indeed cost for uh, about five bucks, basically. And then uh, for the one final thing we will do is we will talk about modules, different modules. So this time, if you are in Replit where you, you are using like a local machine, it's going to be different. So we're, so from next class, we will start to install our first dependency that's what we're going to use. And then, but uh, we actually have a, if you install Python correctly, you should have pip or Python package install Python or pip install package installed. It's basically a way to manage what package you install in Python. This turns out that there is a lot of module that you can use in Python. Lots of different module and start with a uh, next class on Wednesday. So we'll go out and install our first module. And in here, which you uh, make sure you need to have pip installed. But if you're using Replit, you don't need to have that. You are using Replit, you don't need to have that. You just need to, uh, you just need to type uh, import statements. So to import a module, usually it's, it's at the top. And then for example, if you want to import a module kind of random, basically just generate some randomness stuff, do something with random. You can just type import random here. And random is a built-in module. So uh, you don't need to actually install it. Since this is a built-in, it's come with Python once you install it. Install it. But if you're using other modules such as uh, tomorrow, uh, I mean Wednesday, Flask, you need to install this using pip. And then uh, in here, what we can type is something like, so in here we're we'll gonna create our final function. It's called a uh, random topic. Basically, it's going to give you some random topping that a user provided. And then how can I do that? Well, it turns out it's pretty easy. We can just use random.choice. So you can imagine random as another class and the dot choice is a function or with a method within that class. And then that's just going to basically uh, return a randomly chosen quote unquote uh, element in an iterable type. So in an array or in a list. And then here we say self dot toppings. And then if we say something like random topping, and then if we run this, uh, whoops, oops, I forgot to add parenthesis at the end. And now you can see it said mushroom this time, mushroom, mushroom, why well, is always mushroom? And then you can see sausage, pineapple, mushroom, pineapple, et cetera. So this is about class in Python. So this is really brief covering about Python. Python is really a popular language since then, uh, since it started to get invented. Um, it started to get really popular and then it's going to go to like different areas as well. If you're interested into machine learning, 
or data science. Python is also a great way to get started web development uh, also as well, uh, and, uh, and different way as well. I just post the code at the top. So um, the class is almost over. I'm just going to do a quick brief recap here. So talk about variables, different types. We also talk about conditional statements, for loops, uh, while loops, list, uh, dictionary, tuples, and set, as well as function, return, and mainly we focused on class or object-oriented programming in Python. Okay, so we don't have homework for today. We don't have homework for today. So if you want to, you can just create some uh, random Python script if you want to. But does anyone have any question uh, regarding to what you will learn or any question regarding to this class? Feel free to ask uh, now for like, a, we have like a short Q&A session. So if you have any question, feel free to ask. Okay, so talk about the plan on Wednesday then. So basically what you will have opportunity, you have opportunity to create your first fully fledged web application. So we talked about HTML and CSS in the past, but now we're gonna take a look, how can we actually use HTML and CSS with Python as backend programming language. And then we're also going to talk about like database interaction. And then back in next Monday, we'll talk about how could you create a URL shortener? Like how could you shorten the URL? If you ever use a tool called bit.ly, uh, that we will try to mimic there. Uh, and we're also going to learn Heroku and GitHub along the way. So uh, basically, so you guys uh, know how can we deploy these. And then we eventually going to talk about Socket. So like the so like the live chatting app that they just shared. If you, want, uh, if you guys are interested, we'll build that as well. And then finally, we'll learn another final framework called Django. And then for the last week, we'll talk about security. So this is almost like the midway through, is it midway yet? I don't know, actually. Um, but yeah, that's a brief plan. And then for this day. like class like end, like the last class? What? Like when is the last class? I think it's in the uh, beginning of the September or something. I have to double check on that. Maybe it's like September 1st, like at the beginning of school? Um, probably, or maybe, yeah, probably somewhere around that, I think. Yeah. But yeah, so that's about it for this class. So thanks for attending. If you don't have any further questions, uh, feel free to leave the meeting now. Thanks for attending and uh, have a nice day. Uh, have a nice evening. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you for teaching us. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for attending. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Ethan. Bye, Kessler. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.